Ashwa Imram is an artist, founder and artistic director of Mural Lingo. Ashwa Imram is a Singaporean artist working primarily in the medium of painting and performance. He graduated from La Salle's College of Arts, Singapore, with a Bachelor of Art in Fine Arts, Goldsmiths, UK. In 2014, he has since presented his works in Singapore, Netherlands, Egypt, UK, South Africa, and Spain. Currently, Ashra Himram is a co-founder is a fund, co-founder, oh, co-founder and founders and artistic directors of Mural Lingo. It's a creative enterprise that works at the intersection of art and technology. Over the past years, Imram has collaborated with completed commissions for organizations such as Google, National University of Singapore, World Wildlife Foundations, and more. Over the past years, he regularly given talks and run workshops in educational institutions such as GEMS, World Academy, Singapore, WITS School of Art in Johannesburg, South Africa, and Camaten School of Art, Wales in UK. He was also invited as a mentor to the Young Singaporean Conference 2018 by Lee Kuan Yew School Policy Public. Uh, no, it's all right. Hello, how's it going, everyone? Hi, uh, yep, I'm Ishwa Imran. I'm the founder and artistic director of Miralingo, and I'm also a visual artist. And I'm really glad to be here to present um, uh, a brief talk with you guys. Before I move forward uh, with my talk, maybe I'd like to get to know my audience a little bit. Are there anyone here who may have practiced arts before or may have done like a little bit of like uh, art research, maybe like uh, read up about art history? Okay, we have one person. Any others? Okay, so is anyone here familiar with um, visual arts or digital art, performance art, any form? Yeah, a few of you. Okay, great. Okay, so moving on. Um, do I need to click? Right, all right. Okay, so moving on. Uh, so as I was sharing with you guys, um, uh, I started off as a visual artist. I graduated from La Salle College of the Arts. And uh, I, I majored in painting for the first year. But I, I, I went on to explore a few different mediums, such as um, uh, installations, uh, paintings, then I move on to installations, photography, I did a little bit of video art, uh, and finally I was exploring performance art. And one of the reasons why I was exploring performance art was actually because of a very logical reason. It's because uh, back then I was a broke and struggling artist and I didn't have a studio. And when you, when you are really broke and when you're living with your parents, uh, after like graduating from art school, uh, you realize that the largest work that you can make is the size of your room. So whatever fits into your room, your door, is the largest work that you can make. But I had a desire to create like, works that, that was uh, much larger. However, like, I was limited by the space that I had. But I felt that doing performance art allowed me to document the process and share it through digital mediums where I didn't need a lot of space. So that was one of the contributing factors. But of course, there was other factors as well, such as like, being able to just use your body in order to create art. So these are some examples of the works that I've created before. Moving on. And then um, I started getting uh, commissions to do mural paintings. So it all started with one uh, mural for a school. And once I completed it, I felt uh, very fulfilling. It was a very fulfilling experience because uh, I was able to create something much larger. I brought a team together to execute the works. And most importantly, I was getting paid doing something that I really loved. And was, I was able to upskill myself through the process as well. So I went, on to, um, I went on to complete more projects. I was able to get more clients uh, as I started building on, the, um, uh, on a very niche market. And over the past few years, my team and I, we have executed uh, commissions for clients like Google in Singapore. We work with them about three times so far. And we have worked with Bosch, um, a few other uh, smaller companies like Van Gogh. It's, a, it's an ad company. Uh, what else? Uh, festivals and also Decathlon. We did a project with Decathlon last year. So as you can see from some of the images over here, most people define um, murals, when they think about murals, they think about paintings, spray paintings or paintings done with the brush, right? So I built the DNA of my company with, um, with, in a very experimental way. 
So anything that's defined as a fix, uh, anything that is affixed to the ceiling, floor, or wall is defined as a mural. So I tried to push the boundaries to understand, uh, to ask myself, what could a mural be? If I were to install lots of speakers and create an interactive point over here where when you speak, certain sounds are activated, could that be a mural? Actually, it is. So murals could be created with lights, sounds, projections. So over the last few years, I tried experimenting with how the idea of a mural could be expanded. So the project that we did with Google and the Light Turn Up Festival is a good example because we integrated technology in it as well. You guys can find out more about this. I don't know how to drag on this. You can find out more about this in uh, the website. So my team and I, yeah, as I was sharing over the last few years, uh, we work with quite a lot of um, clients. Um, I used to have a big team, as you can see. But right now, we are a very lean team because like COVID and lots of other challenges. But uh, we are still operating uh, and doing like uh, a few other projects this year. And over the last uh, seven years, we have completed about 140 to 150 murals. We have visited about six countries. Uh, we also support uh, community projects. And we managed to completely eliminate um, the use of plastic, uh, one-time use plastic uh, from our operations. And we were also able to support up to about 300 creatives uh, throughout the, the operational years. So some of the clients that we have worked with as well. And these are some of the uh, services that we have provided. So as I was sharing earlier on, we try not to limit ourselves to just like painting a mural. We try to see how can we push the boundaries with like augmented reality or projection mapping. And so I want to share a little bit about how the entire journey started, all right? So um, my entire inspiration to, to start a company actually started off because uh, right after graduating, I wanted to travel the world. And I was living as a nomad, actually. I didn't have a house. I was just traveling from one place to another, uh, couch surfing, uh, bunking in with like whomever I meet, uh, work along the ways and all. And uh, these are some of the countries that I managed to visit. Um, first, day, first, I started off with um, traveling around Asia. And then I went to Europe. And then after traveling to Europe, I went to Eastern Europe. I crossed over with a bus. I took a bus and crossed over to Turkey. And then I took a, a ship to Cyprus. And then from there, I took another ship to Egypt, went to Israel, and then went back to Europe. And then came back home broke. <laughs> yeah, so I realized that um, I had a really um, deep desire to travel and be not too rooted, but I realized that each time I came back home, I was totally broke. So um, one day I, 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 I did some research and I asked myself, how can I travel and not be limited by uh, financial constraints, right? And I realized that um, some of the, the most uh, financially free people are were entrepreneurs. So I asked myself, how can I create myself a system which would allow me a little bit more freedom, financial freedom, which would allow me to do the things that I want uh, without being restricted? And that was actually the inspiration for why I started my company. Okay, so moving on to the work that I created as part of the Artist Residence Program. So as you guys has, uh, have seen earlier on, uh, my my company's logo is actually red, blue, and yellow. It's because these are the three primary colors. And uh, I tried to show that influence of the red, blue, yellow uh, in a lot of our works because um, I think it, has, it plays a very strong uh, significance in art history and design history. For example, uh, in, this, in this design, we incorporated a little bit of Bauhaus uh, aesthetics, which is the... Um, the use of primary colors and very simple shapes in order to create like minimalistic and sophisticated designs. Over here, we also, I also incorporated a little bit of just thought phenomenon where when you look at the design, you see lots of different patterns, but when you look closer, you see that there's an apple in the center, there's a serpent, uh, there's little figures uh, like a mask and all. So the idea is that when we look closer, we, uh, our mind starts um, figuring um, out all these like hidden uh, motifs. So uh, in the design, I also incorporated a René Magritte um, painting. 
uh, which is uh, right in the middle, uh, son of man. Uh, the reason why I incorporated a lot of apples is because uh, I'm actually exploring a performance art project right now, which uh, involves eating an apple. I'll share a little bit more about that later on. So through the design, I was trying to show lots of uh, different, um, oh, this is a little bit about Bauhaus. Yeah, as you can see, it involves like, a lot of like, primary colors. Yeah, as I was sharing, uh, through the design, I was trying to show a lot of like, uh, pop culture or historical uh, kind of cues where apples were used, such as like, famous paintings or like, Adam and Eve. Okay, so moving on to uh, the performance project that I was sharing about, right? So I'm sure uh, some of you may have uh, observed that like, when most people eat their apples, right, they usually eat around the core, and then they throw away the core, right? Does anyone know why they do that? Like any logical explanation to why they do that? Anyone? Yeah, okay, B because it doesn't taste good. Anything, anyone, any, any other reasons? Yeah, the, because the core uh, contains a seed. Any other reasons? Okay, so, uh, so some of the reasons that people have shared with me, besides the two reasons that you guys shared, right, is some felt that it was not edible at all, uh, it, it might not be good for your health, or uh, it's, it's a little harder to bite on. But the truth is, uh, the core of the apple is actually fully edible, and after you eat the core of the apple a few times, right, you realize that uh, you, don't, you don't really find it distasteful. I feel that most of the time, people are not accustomed to eating the apple uh, fully, uh, because they may have seen, say, uh, videos or TV shows where people just eat around the apple and throw it away. Sometimes we see illustrations on, I don't know, science, science, scientific books, right, where the apple is often shown where it's just eaten around the core. Uh, so I think it's just like something that is a, li a little bit more psychological. But the, the apple can actually be eaten fully. And because the apple is not consumed fully, right, there's actually a lot of waste that goes into... Uh, into, into, uh, into the environment. So for example, uh, there's a study that showed that uh, about 10 to 20% of the apple actually goes to the waste when it's not entirely consumed. So when you calculate it by the amount of people that eat apples, uh, and if they are not fully eating an apple, right, actually there's a lot of like, food waste that goes into, um, into like not eating the apple fully. So in order to kind of um, tackle this, right, I, I decided to explore a new participatory performance where I was going to invite uh, the general public to eat an apple and document them eating an apple fully. So the idea is that if we were to... If we were to... Uh, create kind of like a movement where we invite uh, people to eat an apple fully. And when there's enough um, people eating the apple fully, right, we will be able to make a change uh, and bring into awareness that uh, most of the time when we are doing something, for example, eating an apple, we are not really thinking about it. We are just like consuming it the way that we were, uh, we were taught since we were young. So what this does is kind of, it kind of disrupts that that subconscious tendency where we are just operating without uh, really thinking. So uh, what I had in mind was to invite over a thousand people to eat an apple and then create um, a video installation where you'd be able to see all the different uh, participants uh, eating the apple. So I'm visualizing that the video installation would be set up in, in, in this kind of um, um, orientation. If you guys have seen like Matrix, you'll be familiar with this scene. So the idea is to create uh, a video installation where when you're walking through, you're looking at all the different uh, participants eating the apple. All right, so 
And I feel that uh, if we were to uh, work together on like something uh, as simple as eating an apple, we will be able to actually create like change. But it only happens when there's enough of us who believes uh, or wants to participate and want to like create an impact in the world. Okay, so uh, we were going to do a, a performance. Uh, I was going like, to invite um, a few of your colleagues over to do the performance, but I also wanted to let you guys know that uh, you guys, I would love for you guys to contribute to the, pro the project. And how you can contribute is as simple as uh, setting up your own camera uh, in mid-range, where you can just see the upper body, in uh, portrait orientation. It's very important that it must be in portrait orientation because when we are editing the videos, right, it'll be a lot easier if it's in portrait orientation. And then you just need to record yourself eating the apple fully, and then you just need to show that what's left is just the seed and the stems. And lastly, you can just send the, the video to, uh, to me personally, which is imran at muralingo.com with the title uh, Apple or Apple Performance. That's it. Okay, so this is an illustration of how the apple can be eaten entirely. You just need to start from the bottom or the top, or if you're, if you're eating from the sides, at some point you need to just flip it and go to the top or the bottom. I think I've come to the end of my talk. Thank you. Thank you. Can you then show you the performance more? Yes. So you invite us. You need to the performance. Yes. So I was going to invite um, the students who volunteered to join me up front to do the performance. How many students? Uh, How many people? I think there was three who three volunteered, people? right? Three people to come on stage? Uh, they are from Kokhan's room. Ah, so they are coming from Kokhan's room? Yes. All right. So we have to wait. Yes. Yeah. So what we can do is when your colleagues are doing the performance, I'll just let the video uh, run. And if you guys have any questions, we can just do like a Q&A as well. Yeah, yeah, on the side. All right. Uh, Imran, if you want to come on stage, we have a couple of questions from the students um, here and from different rooms. You can get your uh, mic, please. Over there. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited for this performance. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Um, so we have a we have a first questions. Uh, thank you for your talk. I wonder. Um, I want. What are the motivation of your clients, the different clients that you have? Why do they tell you when they sign the contract with you? Is it for art patients, for the image arts that how the company will be perceived? Mm, okay. Uh, the motivation for my clients, I think there are different motivations because the, the kind of uh, services that we provide is quite, re uh, quite wide. For some of the the, the clients, it's very straightforward. They would like to beautify their walls. Um, or sometimes they would like to make a statement. So for example, when the Google client approached, uh, they had a long corridor leading from the lobby to their office and they wanted to paint a mural. And they straight up told me that, look, I, we are not interested in just painting a wall. Uh, we want to show some form of like technology integration in it. So obviously Google is a big tech company, so we knew that uh, we need to kind of like do something slightly different, so we integrated uh, technology in it. And some other clients, for example, we have uh, clients who are interested to do CSR. So they identify a wall for a beneficiary. Um, I think it's OCBC. OCBC identified um, one of their beneficiaries was... Um, Mind School for uh, the Mentally Challenged, Disabled. Uh, so they wanted to provide a painting for the beneficiaries and they approached us and they would say, uh, we would like to give, offer you the funds to paint this mural, but we would like to volunteer. So they would send their, their, uh, their staff for a whole day to volunteer to, to paint. So what my team would do is not play the artist or the painter's role, but they would play more of a facilitator's role. 
they would come and they would provide them with the materials and they would guide them through so that they can paint the wall themselves and feel a form of uh, contribution to the, to the, uh, the, to the society. Yeah. All right, there is uh, also a question from Benjamin. Um, Benjamin, uh, quite close to this one. Um, how do you convince large companies to hire you, or maybe they call you, um, to, have a, to have a piece of your performance? And when you've just started your company with just a couple of reference, just the beginning, so, and what is the basi basically what is the process? So we understood why they asked you that, but as well as how it works. They call you, you call them, how it works. For Miralingo projects, right? Yes. For, okay. Yeah, when you have a contract with a company, for instance, okay. so it works. Um, I don't mean to sound uh, like a show off, but I don't do most of the convincing anymore because uh, they are pretty convinced when they look at our website. <laughs> so, yeah. So but you don't you don't you don't prospect? They call no, you. No, <laughs> I don't prospect at all. I get the clients. They already. I, I'm not a good salesman. I dis, I realized that within the first one or two years, I dislike. Uh, I dislike making a sale, the process of doing the sale. So what I realized is that I need to just be a really good artistic director and a US experience designer. Like, um, I created the entire website in a way where when you go to my website, right, my company's website, you look through, you read everything that I want you to read, you see everything that I want you to see, and um, your call to action is whether like following it, liking it, not really doing anything, or making the, the action of inquiring more about it. So I have the entire process figured out. Uh, most of the time, the client would look through, and I'm pretty sure they will send me an inquiry, like how much will it cost? Are you available? And then I'll respond to them with uh, the set of um, questions and like lead them into making the action that I would want them to, to act on. So since, no, since I, I, I spend some time uh, um, discovering what I am good at, and most importantly, what I'm not good at, what I'm terrible at, and, and what I do not want to do. It helped me to design everything in a way where the entire selling process becomes a lot easier. So I don't, I don't really do any prospecting. Uh, when the client goes to the website, they usually email me, and then I'll just uh, guide them through to, to accept the, the offer. All right, we have another question. Um, Thank you for the talk. It's from Balthazar. What is your feeling towards arts and artists in Singapore compared to the other countries in the world? Uh, pardon. Uh, what is the? Uh, what is your feeling about uh, artists in Singapore yeah. when you compare artists and art from yeah. other places in the world? Okay, uh, that's a that's a pretty good question. Um, okay, so sometimes people people ask me, oh, being an artist in Singapore must be quite challenging. But the truth is, I think being an artist or creative anywhere in the world, right, is very challenging. Because uh, unless if you're born to a very wealthy family, right, I feel that deciding to pursue an art in, uh, pursue a career in the arts, whether you're a visual artist, dancer, photographer, uh, actor, I feel that it's already a life where you know that you have to struggle. There's so many different forms of struggle. The struggle is financial struggle. The other is... Uh, uh, artistic tr struggle where you're trying to stay true to yourself, but at the same time, you know that you need to make some sacrifices, uh, some things that makes you feel like, oh, am I selling out? So there's a lot of um, internal dialogue that you go through. So uh, choosing a, a, the artistic path itself, whether wherever you're born, I feel that it's uh, a struggle already. Uh, it's challenging. But I would say the difference between being, being a creative in Singapore and out of Singapore, because I've traveled around and uh, some of my partners... Um, they were from uh, Europe, so I've lived in Europe for a bit. So what I learned is that there's a lot less opportunities in Europe because there's a lot more creatives. Uh, there's a lot more competition. Uh, in Singapore, there's a lot more grants and a lot more opportunities because the country is really small and it's also quite young. But that sometimes also doesn't really play out too well because I feel that uh, in Europe, for example, uh, the arts is a lot more, taken a lot more seriously because there's a lot of respect for uh, filmmakers. Uh, there's a lot of like integrity they show for like artists. Uh, however, in Singapore, since it's really young, uh, they are learning to show, but I don't feel that they show in the most appropriate way. Sometimes, they feel that they see it more of like a service provider rather than an artist, because an artist is not uh, an artist may provide a service to a client, an organization, or 
or a company in order to sustain themselves, but that is not their forte, you know. Their forte is to create an expression and ask critical things. It's kind of like being a visual philosopher. To create something that um, other people will question, but they try to stay true to themselves and present it. But I feel, sometimes feel that Singapore, uh, Singapore's authority may not fully understand that. Yeah, this is, this is what I understand from my experience. Thank you. Last, last question. Um, Sil Baltazar. How actually, um, was there anything in your life that triggered you into becoming an artist and making a living from it? Why have you decided to become an artist? Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I did not really um, have any strong desires to be an artist when I was young, to be honest. Uh, is because I had a, um, in Singapore we need to go through national service. So when I was in national service, uh, when I was 21 years old, which was about uh, 12, 13 years ago, uh, I had an accident. Uh, it was a spinal accident, which uh, almost made me paralyzed. And during that period of time, I spent a lot of time uh, in, in recovery. And w during that recovery period is when I picked up the arts, which I found extremely therapeutic and healing. So I felt that like there was a part of me that was like broken and art, so art was like able to kind of like, uh, I don't know, like, uh, kind of remake myself. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and I also realized that as I was starting to pick up the skills uh, and I started uh, enrolling in art school, it came extremely effortless to me. And it was the first time in my life where I felt that I did not even need to try and people were appreciating what I did. Uh, because a lot of times, whether it's in uh, other mediums, right, other, sp um, other disciplines, I felt that you, I needed to put in a lot of effort. Uh, but in the arts, I felt that I was just naturally thinking very differently, and it was appreciated. So I decided, why not make a career out of something that comes naturally? Because in life, we all need to work, right? Might as well do a work that comes uh, very organically so that uh, it's also enjoyable throughout the process. So... At the moment, I'm really loving what I do. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. We are very, very honored to have an art from you. Thank you, Imran. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. And so I guess they, they yeah. just left the seed. Yeah. Uh, if you do want to take a picture of this page for the emails, please do. I would love for you guys to, to contribute to uh, the so performance. So how many people do you have so far? So out, far, of, out of 1,001? Mm, this, this is the first That's that the first, that's the very beginning. The, yeah, the first three? Yes, four. Uh, the, uh, the first one, I have one. Uh, uh, yes, of course, two, two, two days ago. Or, yeah, 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 this is the first one. <laughs> yeah, two days ago, that was this one. So, I, so far, I've only had four. So if you guys could contribute, please, please be free to contribute and share it with your friends. So right. Thank you. Most welcome. Thank you so much.